Good morning. My name is Larry, and welcome to the BibleTeam.com Read Along Program. Today is uh, September 1st, first day of the month, and we are on Psalms 144 to 146. Heavenly Father, we praise you. Thank you for another opportunity to read your word. Thank you for the reading for today. Lord, open our hearts. Prepare us, Lord, for what you have for us this morning. That we might learn, that we might be reminded, that we might maybe discover something new about you. Lord, we, we give you all the praise. We thank you for another day. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do um, in our lives. We just, um, we give this time to you, Lord, that we might focus on you right now. And please help us to hear your voice this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's get started. Psalms 1. 44. A Psalm of David. Praise the Lord, who is my rock. He trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. He is my shield and I take refuge in him. He makes the nation submit to me. O oh Lord, what are human beings that you should notice them, mere mortals that you should think about them? For they are like a breath of air, their days are like a passing shadow. Open the heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so they billow smoke. Hurl your lightning bolts and scatter your enemies. Shoot your arrows and confuse them. Reach down from heaven and rescue me. Rescue me from deep waters, from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. I will sing a new song to you, O God. I will sing your praises with a ten-stringed harp. For you grant victory to kings. You rescued your servant David from the fatal sword. Save me. Rescue me from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. May our sons flourish in their youth like well-nurtured plants. May our daughters be like graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. May our barns be filled with crops of every kind. May the flocks in our fields multiply by the thousands, even tens of thousands. And may our oxen be loaded down with produce. May there be no enemy breaking through our walls, no going into captivity, no cries of alarm in our, own in our, own, in our town squares. Yes, joyful are those who live like this. Joyful indeed are those whose God is the Lord. Psalm 145 A Psalm of Praise of David I will exalt you, my King and my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. 
I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. All of your works will thank you, Lord, and your, one, and your faithful followers will praise you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom. They will give examples of your power. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about the majestic and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those who bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescue them, rescues them. The Lord protects all those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. I will praise the Lord, and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, that took us all about um, eight minutes, a little over eight minutes. And um, I can tell I already have... Um, a favorite new psalm. These were awesome, and um, you know, this morning I I, I was un, I'm unfamiliar with uh, 145, 146, 47. You know how there are certain psalms that kind of stick with you that you remember Psalm 23, Psalm 32, Psalm 51. You know, those are just psalms that come to mind. Psalms one, Psalms 119, of course, and um, you know, but there's 150 of them, so it's I'm still learning each one, you know, to be familiar with, and, and I don't know if I'll ever be familiar with all 150, to be honest, but, um, you know, Psalm uh, 144 through 46 um, were were not um, ones that I recall at, at all. I If you would have asked me prior to today what are those psalms about, I would have had no idea. I wouldn't even been able to tell you that David wrote um, 144 and 145. So, um, you know, this, this uh, read-along program is just me taking one day out of the week to read uh, out of, our, out of our, daily, our daily plan, which takes us through the Old Testament, through 2013. So, um, tomorrow's our last day of Psalms. Um, no, actually, it's 147 through 49, and then September 3rd, we start Proverbs, and we just keep on going. So... 
if you'd like to join us, friends, if, if you haven't been reading anything, if you want something to read on a daily basis, um, I, I recommend daily Bible reading myself. It's, it's changed my life, reading the Bible every day. So you could start with us September 3rd and start by reading Proverbs 1 and 2. And um, if you need a, a read the uh, if you need the the plan, you can let me know. Email me, um, and I will be more than happy to send it to you. The details are at the end of this message. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, recount what we read, starting with 144. Um, I, I'm telling you, these psalms were awesome. Um, there's so much to learn about God in, in all of these psalms. Um, and if only people knew God in the way David knew God. David was so intimate. He was so close to his Lord. And um, ultimately, I think David is our example. Um, one of the greatest examples in the Bible of, of for, for us to to model after. If we can only have that relationship with God that, that David did, if we could only reach out to God as David did. And you know, um, much of what David wrote was channeling, uh, you know, Jesus Christ. I don't know if channeling is the right word that, that might sound kind of creepy. But we know he wrote psalms that that Jesus said so many years to come. I mean, it's it's really it's uncanny. You know, I, I'm sure there was many times David got done writing something. He probably really didn't know what he was writing. It was he was you know we know that the spirit was upon David. Okay, so let's let's um, get to. I'm sorry that was a, just a, a comment on on everything I read. Because we read so much, um, uh, so, so <laughs> a lot of neat stuff. Okay, the, praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hand for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. So he acknowledges um, the Lord that he gives him credit for helping him in battle. And and, and David's one of those, um, and I think we all should be, um, a, a person that recognizes God and thanks God for every little detail of their lives. And I believe um, that's exactly how we should look at our lives and, and, and give God credit for, for every little thing that's right and um, thank Him for every little thing that's wrong. Um, I love verse 2. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. He is my shield and I take refuge in Him. That he makes the nation submit to me. So he, he recognizes God's sovereignty. Um, and he looks at God as his safety and rescuer. I mean, for many years, David had absolutely no one that he could truly trust. And um, he was, you know, we know that he was in that, you know, close relationship with Saul. Saul looked at him as his son. And David looked at Saul as a, as a father figure. And, um, you know, we know what happens. Saul goes crazy, and he, he starts trying to kill David. And, you know, for the next 13 some odd years, he's, he's being chased all over, all over the land by Saul, who's supposedly his friend. And um, um, so David had a, a band of followers, followers that, you know, were loyal to David because of, you know, David's heroic efforts in the battle, killing Goliath and then going on to kill many Philistines. Um, so he had his followers. But, but you know, when you have followers, you don't, you don't, you don't really trust in your followers. You, they, they're there to, um, you know, give you courage and, and strength and stuff like that. But, you know, ultimately we, we trust in the Lord because, um, you know, we can't trust in humans. And then uh, verse 3, O Lord, what are human beings that you should notice them, mere mortals, that you should think about them? For they are like a breath of air, their days are like a passing shadow. 
Um, so David had a great sense of, of knowing um, the insignificance of man. In the grand scheme of things, we're just but a breath. We're um, like passing, passing shadow. Um, it's funny because you know we know that you know on on one hand we are but dust. We are you know just um, you know s simple creatures in the grand scheme of things. However, we also know that we're God's masterpiece, and we know that we're so valuable to God that He He sent His Son to die for us. So it's kind of a paradox there um, that, you know, we can marvel at God and his creation, how great he is, and how insignificant we are. But at the same time, we va we, we're very valuable to God. So valuable that he, that he gave his son. So um, let's continue. Open the heavens, Lord, and come down. And he's really calling on um, God's might, his mighty strength and power to, to rescue him. Reach down from heaven in verse 7 and rescue me. Rescue me from deep waters, from the power of my enemies. Um, this, is, this is such a classical psalm. And again, one of my new favorites. Um, he, you know, is haunted by his enemies. And he's just praising God. Verse 11, save me, rescue me from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. And I'm telling you, those that are against God, those are um, the enemies of God. They they speak on behalf of the devil. They represent Satan as as the godly, as those of us that follow Christ are ambassadors of the Lord. Those that don't know the Lord, um, because they're controlled by by Satan in many ways they have the flesh and we know that they're inherently evil like like we're inherently evil only our our duty if you will is to come near to God and seek him with all that we have with all our hearts so that the Holy Spirit can fill us and he can control us you know because we want his will to be done so on the other side of that um, equation we have those that are against God and in in, in in Jesus Christ said if you know those are who are not for me are against me so there we see that anyone of the flesh naturally is against God so um, and um, we know that Satan puts these thoughts into people's heads so um, people have no clue that they're working against God they don't even, you know, they, don't, they can't see it that way because they're in spiritual darkness. So we need to understand that, um, uh, you know, people that aren't in the spirit, that aren't born again, that aren't, that have not, um, ha that their spirit has not been awakened by God. Um, and how, you know, has the, the whole, you know, the Holy Spirit, they, they're full of lies. And I'm not saying that Christians can't lie. I mean, we, we know that's not that's not true. So I don't want to I don't want to get black and white and legalistic here. All I'm saying is, um, you know, David is talking about his enemies and how um, you know he's been been treated. So he's just being honest. And um, anyway, so I'm just going to keep on going here. Um, so he's asking to be blessed. May our sons flourish in their youth. May our daughters be like graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. May our barns be filled with crops of every kind. You know, this is a great prayer for anyone to pray. Um, he's just asking for blessings. Yes, joyful are those who live like this in verse 15. Joyful indeed are those who, whose God is the Lord. So it's a beautiful psalm. Okay, Psalm 145, I will exalt you. Yeah, this this out of the three was my favorite psalm. I don't know about yours, but 145, I enjoyed reading the most. It kind of struck uh, nerves in me. Um, great is the Lord in verse 3. 
He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. I love verse 5. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to meditate on, on his splendor. My friends, if we don't meditate on his splendor, we lose hope. It's like taking your eyes off Jesus. When we read the Gospels, we meditate on, on Jesus and his splendor and how good he is and his wonderful miracles. And we, you know, reading the word for me and, and focusing on his good works, his miracles, helps me to long for that today, knowing that he's not changed that he's the same today as he was when this book was written. So then I just, it, 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 it gives me a longing to see his works in me today that I might want to, um, you know, see him in action. So I, I call to him and say, Lord, help me with, with this, you know, medical condition. I, I, I want friends to be saved um, you know he's put mountains in my life that I can't see past that I can't um, see a way through these mountains and yet I know how great he is so I need to focus on him so that um, I have hope and because I I can't you know he, he puts mountains in your life so that we do rely on him knowing that all all things are possible with God that 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 um, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us so um, unless we focus on him and his greatness we are hopeless we have no plan we have no hope we don't have a plan anyway uh, to me at least I don't have a plan he just guides me every day to, to seek him and and um, he, he, he works out all the, the details. And he's helped me through mountains already. He's helped me through big things that I had no idea how to, how to get through. Work-related, financially related, um, relational, uh, relationshiply, <laughs> is that a word? Relationally related. You know, things in my life that were just so challenging to me. So he's helped me with those. So anyway, um, all I'm trying to say is we, we need to focus on, on him. We need to have all our focus on God. And that's why, to me, the, the, reading the Bible daily is, is crucial. It's essential for me to, um, to, to, to keep being encouraged, to keep having you know, the joy I need and, and the strength. Otherwise, I, you know, um, we'd be dying. And, and you know, if we abide in Christ, we, we stay close to you know, the, the branch. We stay attached to the branch. And that's what, you know, Jesus was saying in John 15, if you don't abide in Christ, we, we die. Um, and, and so, anyway, I, I just encourage you to focus on um, Jesus Christ. And that's what I get from verse 5. Uh, okay. Uh, I love these ne this next section is really, um, it really... It got my attention as I read it. Verse 8, um, the, the Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. All of your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom. They will give examples of your power. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about your majesty, majesty and glory of your reign. Um, for your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout the generations. You rule throughout all generations. I just love um, all the stuff we, all the information we can learn about God in just these um, few verses. He's merciful, compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Okay, let's analyze that verse alone. Um, 
I'll give you an example and, and a confession. And I confess that um, I used to see God as, as a petty God. And what I mean by that, friends, is um, I used to think, you know, um, God was up there, you know, maybe walking around with a big stick. And, and, and if, if Larry, if myself, if I, if I did something that was, um, that was just wrong, if I, <laughs> if I um, you know, did a bad thing, that um, God was going to whack me. So I looked at my life and the incidents as like, um, you know, cause and effect. Like if I got into an accident or maybe I got a traffic ticket, I thought, well, it must have been because I did this three days earlier. <laughs> you know what? I think that's exactly how um, the devil would want us to see um, how, how God is. Um, you know what? That's not the God I read about in Scripture. What, what reading the Bible helped me with is to help me to understand who God is and that he's not petty. And then he's not some God that's tit for tat. He's not out to get you. He's not out to, to, you know, correct, like, every little thing, like, you know, you did this, Larry, so I'm going to do this. That's, that would drive you crazy. And, and um, eventually, that, that, that would lead someone to resentment. Because that, that is a childish attitude. And, and, and... I, I had a very, very immature view of God. As if, as if I'm going to personify the, the, the creator of all things to be someone that's as petty as an immature human being. I mean, how ridiculous can you get? And we all have, and, and to some degrees, we all have incorrect views of God. We see God as, as something that, you know, it's either out of our imagination or maybe someone um, out of our family years and years ago gave us this perception of God that, that doesn't belong, that's not accurate. It's, you know, we get lies from, from people, lies about who God is. But only when we read scripture do we really get the, you know, the essence of him and his character. So um, that's why this was just beautiful to me. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. Did you, did you get here out of 145 and 146 how much God talks about his creation? He loves talking about and reminding us of, of, of who he is, that he is the creator, that he created all things. Um, it's just, I, I, I just can go on and on. And um, I should uh, wrap it up here soon. I go off on these tangents, and I just I just can't help myself. Okay, so uh, all I want to say is the, all these little details about God's character should not go unnoticed. This is why when you read a psalm or any chapter for that matter, we shouldn't just close the book and 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 walk away. Um, I I wholly uh, recommend that when you read. You, you, you meditate a little on, on what you've read and maybe take that with you throughout the day. Um, try to kind of memorize word for word or, or by just, I don't do what word, well word for word, but memorize just the, the concepts that we read, you know, how great God is. Um, the Lord always keeps his promises. In verse 13, he is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those who've been, been bent beneath their loads. What a, what a wonderful story. We, we read a couple weeks ago, we tied this in somehow, I can't remember, to um, Matthew 11, 20 through 30, um, where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who have heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. You know, I will teach you. Um, my burden is light, in, in a nutshell, is what that says. So here he is, in verse 14, this is a parallel, this verse right here. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. Is that not perfect or what? He recognizes that, um, well, you know, David says here that he helps those who are bent beneath their loads, that are, their, their burden is heavy. And we all have burdens probably heavier than we need. And when we go to Christ, when we take this to Christ, he lightens our burdens. Because he, he helps us to be aware of how helpless we are. He helps us understand how weak we are and how we need to rely on him and when we rely on him 
um, uh, burdens are light. We, we don't have um, we don't have the weight to carry anymore. When you open your hand in verse 16, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. You know, I don't know how many verses are in scripture that talk about how God feeds all his creatures. I'm telling you, God is so great. The more I seek God, the more I pursue him, the more I read his word, the greater he becomes. And I want that for you. I want that for you. I want you to, to just see how great God is and continue to see, continue to follow him. Verse 18, the Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. Man, this is, he can't get any better than this. I'm telling you, Psalm 145 is my new favorite psalm. Of these three psalms, I, I just love this. And I, I, it's going to stick with me. This is one of those days where, you know, I'll remember. And maybe not the actual day itself, but um, whenever I think about what Psalm 145, I'll have, I'll, I'll, a smile will come to my face. And I'll be like, oh yeah, it's a beautiful psalm. you got to read it. You know, those kind of things. The Lord protects all those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. I will praise the Lord, and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. It, you can't get better than that. That's my new favorite song, I'm telling you. This has been a great morning for me. Uh, 146, praise the Lord, let all that I am praise the Lord. Um, very similar to the, the opening of 103. There is a couple psalms. Um, right around 103. Okay, get this. Psalm 103 starts with, and it's a psalm of David. Let all that I am praise the Lord. That's how it starts. Psalm 104, let all that I am praise the Lord. And they end that way. Psalm 103 ends with let all that I am praise the Lord. I love that. You start praying that. Start praying that prayer. Let all that I am praise the Lord. And then Psalm 104 ends with that. Let all that I am praise the Lord. So here we are, 146. I suspect that perhaps David wrote 146. It's anonymous as far as we're concerned. But knowing that these words are there, praise the Lord, let all that I am praise the Lord. I would not be surprised if David wrote it. I mean, we can ask him maybe when we see him. But, um, and it really doesn't matter, grand scheme of things. It's just kind of, you know, just a guess. Because it is anonymous. We don't know. Maybe he did write it. And it didn't matter. Um, he ends with praise the Lord. He, he, he loved God so much that he praised him all the time. And that's how we should be. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my, la with my dying breath. Uh, and then verse 3 is beautiful. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. And it's just like us with, with people in, in banking institutions, in, in government institutions, um, at our employer's site um you know we can't be putting our our faith in powerful people you know people that um secularly can help us get out of situations we know that someone in a bank can help us with a loan we know that someone in government can maybe protect us with with a law or whatever we know that um you know people at, at, at our employer can help us with you know something at work related but look but um we need to we need to come to the conclusion that we we need to seek God for being rescued, you know, financially. We need to come to the conclusion that that um, legislation um, isn't necessarily the answer, that it's not the answer, that God is the, the true answer to all things, to all of our problems. God needs to um, be looked at as the rescuer and as the solution. Otherwise, our faith is in everything else. And um, we know that the Lord wants us to trust in Him. And don't put confidence in powerful people. <sighs> so that's a great lesson right there. So, I mean, Psalm 146 is powerful too. They're all good, aren't they? And when they breathe their last, they return to the earth. And it just goes to show that, you know, we're all equal in God's sight. We're all just, just dust. There is no man greater than another man. Not in, not in the Lord's eyes. Um... But joyful are those 
who have the God of Israel as their last help, as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. At verse five, He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever, and that's beautiful. I, I mean, again, going back to creation, uh, God likes to remind us all throughout Scripture that He is the Creator, and and by by reminding us of that, He He helps us to understand that He's sovereign that he created all this to begin with and that we can do all the complaining we want but we need to understand that God's in control and that he doesn't you know understanding God's sovereignty is so crucial because when when we do that we recognize that he doesn't allow anything to happen to us unless it, it goes by him and it's just like you know Job didn't understand everything that happened to him um, and uh, it took all that to, to get to know who, who God was and how sovereign he, he is. And God blessed Job accordingly. Um, but we're just getting off on tangents. We're take, taking way too long. Um, you know, he gives justice to the oppressed, food to the hungry. He frees the prisoners. Verse 8, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners. And he goes on and on and on. Uh, he cares for the orphans and widows to soft, pot, soft spots in God's, God's eyes and God's heart. Um, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. That's always there, how he deals with the wicked. Um, the Lord will reign forever. He will be your God. Um, praise the Lord. Well, let's close. We spent um, a lot of good um, minutes here on some really good information. I, I, I implore you to, to continue seeking, to continue reading. Um, and let's let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father, we praise you. We thank you for another wonderful time in your word this morning. Uh, thank you for helping us to, to reflect on your word, that we might understand this, that, that these words might sink down deep into our hearts and that we might continue to seek you. And Lord, help us open our eyes, help us open our hearts that we might see how great you are, that we might continue to seek you, continue to put our trust in you, and, and look at you as our solution, Lord, because you are. You are a creator, and uh, you, you made us, and you know all that there is to know about us, and you love us so much, Lord. You are, your, your mercies endure forever, and we praise you, and we thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, friends. Have a wonderful day, and God bless you.